All right. Thanks very much. I'll disappear and um, just let yeah. me know when you want to step through the through the yep. slides there, Alan. Yep. Okay. Just before that, okay. we'll just get Matt to say hello. So Matt McGlinchey has joined us. You're on mute at the moment, Matt. Do you want to say hello to Tori, who's our one and only person here tonight? <coughs> G'day, Tori. My name's Matt McGlinchey. I'm the finance manager at CDC. Um, so yeah, there's bits and pieces of finances in here that I may be able to help you with you later after Alan's run through it. Cheers. Terrific. Thank you. Good to meet you, Matt. Cool. All right, um, Darren, if you go on to the, the, the first slide, that would be great. Okay, so really just wanted to put the annual plan in the context of Council's sort of uh, more broad planning process. So, so we put together a long-term plan that's got a, a, a 10 year duration. So we do that every three years. Um, uh, yeah, so it's 10 year duration, but three year, three year sort of um, revisit. Um, and the last one of those we, we adopted last July, uh, well, end of June last year. Um, and that plan really deals with what we intend to deliver to the community over that 10 year period. What's all that gonna cost and how do we plan to fund it? Um, and then the annual plan we do in the, in the two years between, so the, the second and third years of, the, of, a, of, a, of, of a long term plan cycle. And the long term plan really focuses on the differences or the changes from what we had planned for that year in, in the long term plan. Next slide, please. So, Alan, can I just ask you a, a question on that? So, uh, and this actually may be a question more for, for Matt than uh, it is for, for you, but what inflation estimate did you make in that initial plan? That is a question for Matt. Hopefully he will respond. Yeah, so, so what, what we do, we get a inflation adjuster specifically for the local government sector right across New Zealand from Burl. So um, LGNZ, uh, Local Government New Zealand, actually pay some dollars uh, to Burl to to give us an adjuster essentially. Um, they are uh, an, an economic um, agency, or they're a yeah, sorry economic Bureau. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> it, it's rather than your milk and butter, it's more around. Um, sure, yeah. The stock I, I've been the CEO of a big organisation, so yeah, um, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm aware of I'm aware of that. Okay, uh, but, but I'm interested to know what uh, what the inflation estimate that you uh, assumed. When you when you formed the budget, yeah. So it's um, that, so essentially they came back with they give us three. They give us a capital one, a salaries one, and an operating one. So the salaries and operating were about um, two point eight percent. The uh, salaries one was more like two percent, but we uh, in terms of market movement, it was around two percent. So. Um, that obviously was surprising to all the councils around the country because of what was happening. Um, so lots of discussions ensued, but essentially Bill's view was that the inflationary pressures are right here, right now, and would actually drop off um, sooner rather than later. Again, though, that was at a point in time, and goodness knows what they're thinking at the moment. Um, yes. So it, it's, all, it's always one of those situations where you, you're never sure, but, you know, we, we, we're just not um, fluid enough to be able to change things as quickly. If anything, I'd suggest we're probably understating. Oh, you've gone quiet, Matt. Matt, you put your, oh, you're still on. Yeah, okay. Um, probably just with while well, while well, Matt's recovering his mic somehow, it's probably just worth mentioning that there was other information other than Burl that the council used for salary adjustments. I think there was it was it Infometrics, Melon. There yeah, was a yeah. information on Infometrics inflation assessments for wages. That was, uh, that also that, was used, process. that was used in the annual plan rather than the LTP. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. 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 So I guess I mean those numbers as a uh, as a consumer of New Zealand, um, and I'm not talking about inflators. Sorry, yeah. Matt. Sorry. You, you'd, you'd gone quiet, Matt. Do you want to try again? We lost you about a minute ago, Matt. We lost you again. <laughs> well, we, I'm not sure whether you can. You're still talking, Matt. We can't hear you at the moment, so we'll, we'll just continue the. Yeah, do you want yeah. to continue what you were saying, Tori? So I guess um, you know if you if you read any. Uh, any global press, you'll know that there is huge um, pressures on employers globally. You may have heard mm -hmm. of something called the Great Resignation, and that's actually been happening for, for about a year now. 
um, and having run um, multi-million dollar organizations, uh, I know that the pressures um, can be can be significant when you're looking at replacing people. I'm also mm -hmm. very aware that the TDC have lost a lot of talent, uh, particularly in the planning area, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that because of uh, some delays in um, in consents for, sure. yep. for, for us. Um, so I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that um, just in those areas alone that you're taking those numbers because if you read any of the international press, you'll know, uh, particularly in the salary line, and I, I, I'm, I haven't got a copy of the annual report in front of me, but um, the salary line alone at an inflation level of 2% is, a, quite frankly, a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's obviously in, in purview of what's going on in today's world, but even 12 months ago when you developed and finalised yeah. the 10-year plan, uh, that's a rather sort of fictitious number and, and rather unbelievable for any employer Um let alone somebody who even, you know, 12 months, 18 months ago sure. was facing a lot of pressure on loss of planning staff. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a little surprised that you're, you're taking that information and not applying a sense of, uh, of judgment uh, on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, absolutely take that, take that feedback. Um... Yeah, at the time, yeah, that yeah, we we made the, that 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 best estimate. Um, except that that yeah, it certainly certainly with the benefit of hindsight, it looks way under, and and maybe it was way under at the time. But Matt is running in the chat at the moment. A team, if we yeah. if you can click on the chat, he's, he's resorted to the old uh, semaphore. So yeah, uh, yeah, just comment. so probably just to summarise what's in the chat, Matt saying that um, the capital um, was around two point eight percent inflation. <laughs> Um, and the salary overall was 5.1%. Part of that's performance, and part of that is um, the majority of salary adjustment, um, basically for the market. I think yep. about 4.1%. Yeah, right. and then, and then yep. just to say, the other thing is part of what's driving the rates increase in the annual plan is a higher provision for salary increases, um, yeah, which we'll I'll touch on as we go through the presentation. So kind of recognise now that that um, level that we put in the LTP was, was too low. Um, yeah, it, particularly in that, you know, the point you were making, Tori, about trying to hold on to staff um, and um, yeah, try and try to to increase the the provision for those those uh, wage costs to to help keep staff. Um, to be honest, keeping planning staff has been an issue for several years. It's not not just yeah. in the last <laughs> last kind of couple. Yeah, well, I've only lived in the region for two, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just familiar with what's going on currently. Cool. Okay. So I'll carry on through this. And again, very happy again. Any, you know, any questions or, or feedback you want to give us on the way through is really great. So, um, so yeah, just going to finally cap, finish on the purpose of the annual plan. So it is about identifying variations from the LTP as the proposed budget and the funding impact statement. So how are we going to fund things in it? And I guess it's part of that um, accountability to the community. So we've consulted with the community as part of arriving at the long-term plan obviously now having to make changes so so given that those changes are um reasonably significant we're going back out for consultation as part of that um this is just the timeline so consultation up finishes tomorrow um and then we've got a hearing on the 18th so that's an opportunity for submitters to come and talk directly to the councillors um, and then on the 25th of May, the council will sit down and think about what it's heard from submitters and make some decisions on what it wants to change in the annual plan. And then we'll adopt the annual plan at the end of end of June. Um, and then, yeah, that sort of drives the budget and uh, rates and all those sorts of things for, 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 for the next financial year. Um, so, yeah, again, I... Yeah, given your background, I don't think any of these will be a big surprise, but there, there's a bunch of, of um, cost pressures the council's experiencing. Um, so inflation is is one of those. Um, we've, you know, we've been talking about wage inflation, but there's obviously all sorts of other aspects of inflation yeah. which are uh, affecting us at the moment. So I think we're kind of at, at, at or close to 7% across at CPI at the moment. 
um, yep. and um, yeah, obviously affects the, the council and and some of the some of the things that we buy around capital goods are also a, a affected, but potentially even a, at a higher level. We've just talked about the tight labour market and kind of recognising the need to try and hold on to skilled staff and also you know at times trying to recruit them. Um, the government's got a kind of ambitious program of reforms that are going on that are affecting local government at the moment, um, and you know, they are continuing with that, and they are driving costs for us as well. And then just, finally, excuse me, Alan, may I just yep. ask a question? Is that including uh, programs like Three Waters? Is that what you refer to as government reform, or are there or are there other things? I'm sorry yep. to be asking probably sure, quite no, no, a, 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 no. a dumb question, but. No. Uh, don't I'm feel, not, I'm don't not feel aware. embarrassed about <laughs> asking any questions. There are no dumb questions. So yes, um, the three waters is part of that. Um, they also uh, so there's the three waters in terms of the proposal to to move the operation to to the four entities around the country. Mm. But the government's also doing further water reform, um, and certainly we'll touch on it in a minute, but sort of Water Services Act has come in since we adopted the LTP. That's a whole new sort of regulatory program um, and require, drives a bunch of requirements for the council for additional work in addition to, to that. Then the government has also got working through its um, reform of the Resource Management Act. So that will also have major effects for council. Um, not really seeing um, a major hit on costs for that in the forthcoming year, but we'll see where we get to in the future. Um, and uh, the other one, that they have, there's a review going on on the future of local government itself. So that process is also chugging along. So that's also part of that reform sort of agenda of the government. Um, again, no, no outcomes from that as yet um, and probably a couple of years away before we really see what that looks like and what the government wants to do. So yeah, kind of yeah, a, a, yeah. a, a bunch of reforms going on. And and what are the and what are the cost impacts of of some of those? I mean, can you maybe cite one for somebody yeah. who's not sitting in local sure. council and sure. doesn't well, take much notice of the government at the moment? The one the one that's that affects is going to mostly affecting us in 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 the upcoming financial year is the is the water services. Act and if yeah. you if you just let me go on a couple of slides, we we touch on that, so I can talk you through that sure. at that point. Yeah, Alan, it's probably just worth pointing out, Tori, that um that is the one that kind of kicks us in the butt for this forthcoming financial year, but um some things like um the government reform program, like the the, the fresh water program, for example, will start manifesting in cost increases in environmental planning later on. Um, maybe not so much this year, but you'll start seeing creeping it up in following years. Yeah, just to round off this slide, the, the other cost pressure is the Waimea <coughs> Community Dam, and you may well have seen um, coverage in the media recently of, mm. of further cost overruns. And so, yeah, looking at uh, those and how we how we fund those in, in the forthcoming year. And again, I'll touch a bit more on those as we go through. Next slide, Darren, please. Okay, so just we'll just talk through each of these. So, so yeah, so. In terms of the cost pressure, so Water Water Services Act, so as I say, came in came into effect um, second and a half of last year. So, yeah, it wasn't in place when we we adopted the the long term plan, and it does drive us into some work which we hadn't um, we hadn't already planned. I mean, it's got great laudable aims. So it's aimed at assuring that there's sufficient safe drinking water for for, for everyone. Um, we're required to undertake uh, a bunch of new processes, such as preparing water safety plans for all our water schemes. Um, and we have to carry out those whole bunch of new quality assurance rules, performance measures we have to report on, and much more stringent sampling and monitoring regimes. So there's a whole raft of things that we have to do, which we hadn't before. Mostly they, op they, um, they affect our Kind of operating expenditure, um, but also have some some uh, some impact on on our capital program going forward. So there. So what? So what is the what is the cost impact of the Water Services Act and compliance of that in in the next financial year? Again, if we go on when we go on a few slides, I can show you okay. certainly in, certainly in terms of, of of what it what it means in terms of a rates increase, so a percentage rates increase. So it may not be there. I may not be able to have the have the actual numbers in front of you, although Matt might be able to dig those out for me, but I can show you what it means in terms of an increase in rates. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to give you a bit of an idea. Um, and then Waimea Dam <coughs> um, overruns. So um, 
Yeah, so we are getting closer to the completion of the dam. So at, at the at the at the beginning of this calendar year, it was about seventy percent complete. So we are we are sort of getting there, um, but we have been notified by Waimea Water Limited, which is the sort of joint venture that's building the the dam of cost overruns, mostly around um, the difficult um, geology, um, some COVID impact costs. Um, and uh, yeah, and and, uh, and kind of inflationary costs. Um, so when we when we developed the long term plan, the best estimate for the cost of the dam was 158 million, with the top being 164. So in the LTP, we budgeted for that 158 million. Um, currently, the best estimate now is 184. So it's yeah had a, a reasonable large yeah. increase. And again, so, on a later slide, we can talk more about um, you know, how, how we're looking to fund that. Yeah. So we, just for, for somebody who's not a geologist, um, <laughs> yeah. what, what do you mean by difficult geology? Uh, I'm, I'm not really a geologist either, but um, but as I understand it, the the uh, and Dwayne will can dive in and help me out here. But as I understand it, the the rock is much, as Iron says, much more less, less hard and more um, crumbly <laughs> to, to yeah, right. it, than than, uh, than was anticipated, and and the kind of the testing before the the project started um, indicated. Don't help me out here. Yeah, sure. Um, also, <laughs> not a geologist. It's, it's like caveat here, but. Um, there were two issues primarily, I believe. The first was that um, they were expecting to find, uh, find a, a hard base on which to put the curtain of the dam. And actually that ended up being the case. And there was a lot more, um, there was a lot more places water and um, could, could seep under the dam, for example. So they ended up having to dig a, a down a lot more and putting it down a concrete curtain um, to kind of reinforce that. The other thing is the dam itself is an earth dam or a rock dam. Um, well, actually, a rock dam, and the they needed certain qualities from the rock they crushed to fill that with. And in fact, when they did testing on site, it didn't meet those qualities. That it kept on fracturing and fracturing, right? Well, um, surely... Rather than forming reasonably sized lump, lumps, yeah. so it would have been. Um, well, it, it would have sounded like it was too permeable, but actually, because it would have kept fracturing, it basically would have formed silt, which would not have allowed water to drain through the dam. And oddly enough, the dam is designed to allow water to drain through it and down to the bottom and out. Right. So I guess as a uh, somebody who's not a geologist nor an engineer, um, I, I guess I'm pretty surprised that uh, we've got some pretty well uh, versed and skilled engineers in this country. And I'm a little bit surprised that to, to, to firstly hear that, I've also read a little bit about that in, uh, in the media about why that is, <clears throat> is uh, creating an overrun. Um, and it sounds like the, uh, the joint venture um, of which the TDC is part created a situation where perhaps you didn't have the best engineer um, on the job because geology does not change. You know, there's many things in the LTP which have changed and uh, I respect that and some of those are uh, out of your control. But I guess the thing is, rock doesn't change. Uh, certainly in our lifetimes, it doesn't change. So I'm a little puzzled um, why geology is being called out as an issue uh, that you're then having to throw additional uh, resource through different types of, um, of solutions towards. So surely there is comeback to the engineer um, who conducted the work mm. there's um uh, there was a report conducted last year you've probably heard of it where the, um we had an independent person run through the process council ran when making its decisions and that covered things like did we um do due diligence on um, geotech and things like that i can't i can't answer comprehensively on this i'm sorry what i can say is that um that found that by and large council ran a good process but not a completely faultless one. Um, and I do know that when the, um, the council was looking at this, we got, um, we, there was at that time thought to be comprehensive um, geological testing um, of the site. Uh, and that was peer reviewed and other bits and pieces by 
people who were industry experts in this area because council you appreciate doesn't have engineers that are that are expert in this sure. kind of thing mm. yeah and um and a lot was relied on for those and um to come back to your question around recourse um i would have to go that's that's probably something that um Wyoming water um would have to answer in regards to those professional advisors yeah, yeah I, I mean again, i think it, it sorry Anna. So it's just that, you know, if, if you've got a strong interest in this area, then, then um, we can follow up um, tomorrow and email through the kind of the reporting and stuff that came through through the council. I think it was all open. It was all um, in yep. public, wasn't it, Dwayne? So we can, yeah, we can, so, so. So I can give you the, yep. send you the links to those where you can, you can have a sort of more detailed look of, uh, about that review mm. if, if mm. that's of interest to you. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I just guess that it, if it's having such a big impact, um, you know, a $20 million dollar, Cost mm -hmm. overrun um, is is significant. Um, yeah, that's just the latest one to be shared, Tori. To, to full disclosure, that's just the latest cost overrun. Yes, yeah, and, when, and, the mayor, and the it's possibly going to be possibly sorry. going to be higher, right? Yeah. So when when everyone signed up on this uh, about two something years ago, um, the estimate then was one hundred and six yes. million dollars yeah. plus yeah. some contingencies. Yes. So there was there was some plus pluses. Um, yeah. Um, and, and lots of things had actually been narrowed down. One of the things there was sort of risk on was, um, you know, kind of materials and the geology. And that is the thing that is, um, for the most part, um, cost council. There's, uh, there's ongoing other issues to do with the contractor and principal and stuff like that, which I probably won't go into. But I don't think that's the primary cost driver. It is the things we talked about before. So, yeah, it's gone up a, a lot. And, and, um, and I think the mayor and the council would be the first to front up and said that actually... Um, you know, a lot of the critics of the dam at the time pointed out that it would, might go up by 1.5 to um, two times. And that's, they were bang on. That's exactly where we're finding ourselves right now. Yeah. So I just think it's as a, as an organisation, if I talk from an organisation standpoint, it's very difficult to pass those costs on to a constituency Base who already pay some of the highest rates in the country. Um, and as I see it, um, and, you know, I'm in a, in a slightly more fortunate position than uh, many, than many people. Um, there are, there are people in this region who are doing it incredibly tough. Um, and I just don't think that they will, will stomach um these sorts of cost increases and i think you know perhaps darren your your comms guy uh has probably got a lot of an awful lot of work to do in terms of uh building those trust relationships back with mm -hmm. the constituents because i mean when i read in the in the press you know a week or so ago um of the initial budget of 105 million to 184 possibly going to be higher um I just was like these these people, and I, I you know like this is with with respect, but these people just don't know what they're doing, and there's something wrong with the compliance or the 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 engineering side of things. I mean, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a geologist, mm -hmm. <laughs> far, far far from it. I uh, wouldn't know one rock from the other unless no, it hit me not. in the head. Um, <laughs> but um, but there's something very very wrong with uh, with this and. You know, I, I just don't believe that it's fair to ask the people of this region to stomach a cost overrun of that of that magnitude, and it's it's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah, your your um your feedback is noted, and we will will put that through to the council. I mean. We are in a position, I think, where, as I said, we're kind of 70 70 percent or further through. There isn't really an option of not finishing the dam. No, of course. Yeah. So, of so course. Ult ult yeah. ultim ultimately, it has to be paid for. And um, we are, you know, we're still trying to work with the government and others to see whether they might chip in. But so far, with no real success, as far as I'm aware. Well, so surely it's part of three waters, and it's all going to get be be paid back. <laughs> um, Tori, yeah. So, so the plan at the moment, and it's it's it was covered in a um, a report prior to this annual plan draft um, consultation document being adopted, is that the council is basically going to fund the majority of these additional 
cost overruns. Um, in fact, you might even have it on the slide later on. Alan. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. And she can and he can explain what we're doing in there to try to minimise the short term impact. Um, but yes, in short, the plan is to transfer um, council's interest, at least good part of the interest, um, the very at the very least the part that relates to the community water supplies over to these three water entities. So, so in that um, in that case, Dwayne. Um, as a constituent in this region, do I get a uh, cashback? Do I get a refund mm -hmm. of my contribution to the Waimea Water Dam? Uh, no, just so just like all assets um, are managed by council that will be transferring over, um, what will happen is um, the council transfers it, and I believe the debt that we have associated with that um, transfers to the entities as well, not the, the capitalised value or, the, or the, um, the, the value of the assets. So we, our assets might be worth, I don't know, I'm just making this up, I can't actually remember what the assets are worth, but a billion dollars. Council yeah. doesn't get a billion dollars. It, um, what, what it does get to do is hand over the debt associated with these assets. So we'll get um, basically the debt that council's racked up and according to this and, and many other projects will will yeah, go along sure. with with three water entities. Yeah. yeah. So is it not in the interest of constituents to load the uh, the debt up on the project <laughs> rather than pass that on mm -hmm. to the constituents and save the people who are doing it really tough? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, there, there, go, go on, Matt. I mean, yeah, that you, you're an interesting point there. It's the, obviously there's 78 councils in New Zealand. How how um, people are approaching the transition to the three waters is very interesting because obviously there's different ways to um, portray things. Um, how much you do in terms of maintenance, how much you do in terms of capital spend, etc., to give yourself a favourable outcome towards the transition to three waters is, is going to be key. In saying that, Ernest and Young are going to be coming around and doing due diligence on us um, to make sure it's an even playing field. Um, so, well, yeah. It'd be, it'd I know, I'm, I'm saying, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit cheeky saying that, but... Mm. Um, yeah, and, uh, and yeah. I mean, in, real, in reality, all these costs are, are, are funded through debt, um, and yeah, and so you know, we we will be borrowing for it, and and you know, again, I'll I'll talk on in a later slide a little bit more about those arrangements, but <clears throat> what's affecting rates is the is the interest on those debts rather than, yeah so and you know in some cases repayment, but but you know, mostly for next year, it's it's uh, interest payments. Yeah, that, and that's basically the minimum council can get away with while still considered being a prudent manager sure, of its finances. Sure, and well, of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. No, I'm, a bit, I'm being a bit. Uh, a bit no, that's fine. That's fine. Cheeky I say, and. Uh, I say we'll come back in a future slide to how we're funding funding that. So I'll just carry on on pressure pressures the cost pressures. So. Um, so uh, cubic meter water rates are, are, are going up. So. Um, for a number of years, the council has supplied several large industrial uh, operations in the Nelson City Council area with water, um, and this is, I guess, this helps um, helps spread the large fixed cost, cost component of that water supply um, around a, a wider range of, of users. They obviously pay for the, for that water. Um, in this coming year, we've been notified by one of those um, industrial users that they are going to use significantly less water than they've done in the past. Um, and unfortunately, that means that the fixed costs have to get spread over fewer cubic meters and fewer users, um, which then you know, increases the cost per, per meter to all the remaining users. Uh, insurance cover. So, um, been a substantial increase in the council's insurance cover. So two aspects to that. One's one's just the general increase in premiums um, with uh, the kind of increase in natural hazards, climate change considerations, and those sorts of things. Um, and then the other part of that is, is a number of our assets were revalued last year, and so they have much higher value than than we had previously. And uh, on the back of the increased value, the premiums have gone up in terms of replacement of those sorts of things. 
Um, now, in the LGP, we had planned for an increase in, in insurance costs. We obviously saw that was coming, but they've increased higher than we had budgeted for. Um, and again, there's a later slide when I can show you the, yeah, how, how each of these things sort of affect the, the budget, in, uh, the, the rates increase. And then attracting and retaining staff. So again, we've had, we have talked about that a little. So yeah, so in this case, you know, we've made some uh, budgetary adjustments from what we had in the LTP, increases from what we had in the LTP to, to help uh, us um, both retain staff and then attract them. Um, yeah, they're obviously having the right staff is important to delivering services. And you, your example with the planning staff is a, is a great, great one. Um, and you know, where um, where we don't have skilled staff, often we have to fill the gap with consultants, and often they're more expensive than than paying staff directly. Um, and again, they'll have the same pressures on their their salaries <laughs> over the over the yeah. next year. So, so just as a as a matter of of interest. Um, why is it so hard to find um, to find good staff? I don't know if there's one reason. Um, yeah, you know, again, is 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 the is the, I mean, you know, presumably the council is a good employer. Yeah, I think the council is um, a good employer. I mean, one one of the issues is is housing affordability. So we've certainly had. Um, issues at times with staff who've, who've looked at positions and then realised how much it's going to cost to, to live here um, and, and chosen not to, to make the move. Um, yeah, and I guess the, if, again, this is my personal view, we, I think we, we, we do have competition and we'll continue to have competition with central government. So quite often, uh, more and more so, people are able to live in Nelson, Tasman and work for the government without traveling to, to, to Wellington very often. So a lot of working from home. Um, so that's also, also a factor. Um, our salaries are pretty much set on a market equivalence type basis. So, so our salaries shouldn't be out of whack with um, the rest of the, the, the country. I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's a general post COVID shortage of skills staff um, with the borders being closed as well, which is obviously going to be going to be part of the, the picture going forward. Yeah, the, the, the only other factors I'd add is that um, we suffer from the aging of the workforce just as much as anybody else. Um, and the economy has run quite hot and many of the people that we need um, are also needed by the private sector when it's doing that. So if you think about surveyors and engineers, for example, and planners, um, we need them, but so do the people undertaking development. And development in Tasman has risen by 50% in the last few years. Um, so yeah, it's just everybody's busy and the private sector will pay more than us, um, but we are on par for the most part with, with the local government sector. Mm. No, I, so I, what's I, the, sorry, uh, Matt. Sorry, Tori, to, to, to add to that, I think the, the whole working re, working from home, working remotely, et cetera, has, has certainly from an accounting perspective has made Wellington just, uh, it's, I, I'd lost the staff literally a week ago and they're getting Wellington dollars for Tasman um, and, and able to work in Wellington. There's just no way we can compete with it. So it's, which is, we, we have to. So I'm not quite sure how that story is going to end. Not well. So just, uh, Dwayne, back on your point about the ageing workforce, what, what's the issue there? Um, we've got, well, many of the people that are um, trained in planning and in engineering uh, are of an old, older cohort. So um, the council's got some interesting statistics. I can't remember what it is. I could, we could probably fish them out and send it to them. But we, we understand how many of our people are heading into retirement age in the next few years. And that's, that's across the local government sector. And for a long time, we didn't train enough people um, in New Zealand for things like planning and engineering. And, and what's more, in that same time, the scope of things required to be done by planners and engineers has massively increased. And the Water Services Act is a good example of that. Now we need people to do things that we didn't need to do um, two years ago. And that, that's across all of the work we do. The, the constant setting of the bar, raising of the bar by, by government um, by ourselves in some cases with our engineering standards and our district plan. Um, it just means you need more people to do the things you used to have to do with, with a, you know, a, a fewer number of people. I'm just a bit perplexed by the ageing workforce comment because I understand that and getting people um, 
perhaps reskilled, uh, but if they've got a good basis in whatever their skill set is, mm. then surely they can be retrained because they've already proved that they are smart at uh, at whatever their uh, area oh. of expertise actually is. Not, so, not meant to mean that they're not. They are, in fact, some of our best performers, but they are yeah, simply so, leaving the workforce or deciding that they don't want to work full time. Yeah, but I'm also hearing a lot of uh, stories of people who um, move to this region because it's a pretty damn uh, spectacular <laughs> place to live. Mm. Uh, but they do want to work. They want to work in a part-time capacity city and mm. they're not able to um and you know having i've lived overseas for for many years and in in and in asia where quite frequently you see very elderly people people who would be you know sort of my parents age um in the workforce in some mm. capacity yeah. and you know they're working in part-time jobs um and I'm sure that given the amount of money that you 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 say that you're spending on consultants, um, perhaps those people can come and do sort of consulting type work, but you're not having to pay them, you know, consulting uh, volumes of of, uh, of salary. Yeah, so, certainly. Well, I a, I, one thing I'd observe is that the council, when I started uh, eight years ago, was very much more of a traditional employer. Um, 40 hours a week, thank you very much, no flexibility, working from home, you can forget that. Um, uh, you know, a lot, lot, probably a lot less family friendly as well. In the time that I've been there, it's, it's, it's gone on leaps and bounds. And now we are very, very flexible in our work arrangements. Um, we, you know, for good people, we're far more flexible about what kind of hours they want to work and things like that. Uh, we, I think we're a very family friendly organisation on the whole now, certainly within my team that, it, that it's the case. Um, but essentially, you know, um, the, the, that's, um, we can't find the people. I've had, I've, and I'll give you one example. Matt can give you several, but we need um, a senior stormwater specialist in our area. Stormwater is one of those areas where um, people's expectations are rising. Um, it's no longer acceptable for people to be flooded, even even if it only happens rarely. Um, there is um, the links directly to the freshwater reforms because stormwater is one of the, um, our main discharge. In fact, not wastewater. Um, and, and we need someone to be able to do this planning for us. We've got a long list. Our consent requires us to do a, a catchment management plan for about two communities every year, um, forever, more or less, and constantly reviewing them. We've advertised, uh, this is a good job. It's around $100,000 plus 8% benefits. Um, we've advertised twice. We've approached individuals. And now we've gone to a recruiting agency. And their advertising found nobody. Um, so it's just an extraordinarily tight market. Um, and there are, um, there are people we know locally who, um, who have experience in this area, but they're either snapped up by someone else or they don't, they don't want to work. They've, they've, already, they've, they've gone to retirement and they're not willing to come back out. It is, it is, and that's just one example. Um, and it's one mm. that's pained to me quite a bit over the last six or seven months, but there are lots of little ones like that. Um, and yeah. certainly I'd say the council's trying. Our vacancy list has risen quite a lot in the last year right well maybe there's uh, maybe there's a different problem going on it's it's, it's the, that one i mentioned plus all the ones matt and um um alan mentioned so it's it's multi-faceted mm. and we're, we're trying to evolve with the times um yeah yeah, yeah it's i mean it, you know in employee uh, satisfaction is incredibly difficult um, mm. for any employer, be it public sector or private mm. sector. Yeah. Um, and you know, but but people are, are choosing where they work, how they work. Uh, it's a very vastly different um, playing field in the in the working environment to how it was Absolutely. even twelve months twelve months ago. Yeah. Um, but I'm just yeah, I'm just perplexed a little bit, you know, because I. I I know people who are highly skilled who um, who live in this uh, area who um, who can't find mm. work, and I'm not necessarily saying the, the stormwater experts, <laughs> um, but um, if if I do know them, I'll I'll find them. I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but but, <laughs> but you know, it's it's just perplexing that I, I guess. Um, you know, it's it's such a such a big issue, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you know, and retention of people and development of people is uh, is is always very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But when you've got huge gaps and you're having to pay 
uh, big money for consultants. You know, to, to be fair, if I was a consultant, and a, an engineering consultant um, working for the TDC, I probably would, if I could earn more money out, outside as a consultant too, why, why not do it? And I think that's also part of uh, what, yeah. you, what you're possibly facing. Um, so the final one of these cost drivers is really an opportunity that we've had to take advantage of uh, Waka Kotahi funding. So Waka Kotahi is the New Zealand Transport Agency. Yep. Um, so since we adopted the LTP, there's been an opportunity for us to um, receive some funding. They, they Normally they co-fund most of our local uh, transport projects and um, so there's an opportunity for us to, to co-fund two important cycling and walking um, projects in in Richmond, um, but it's one of those where, you know, if we want to uh, secure that money, then we have to provide some ourselves. So, um, it's sure. yeah, uh, and try and do that, that. Yep. while the opportunity is there. So we've added a, a budget. Use it or one. lose it. Yeah, just under a million dollars in in this coming financial year. Again, that's that is borrowing. That's borrowed, so it's borrowed over the life of the asset. Um, and so, um, you know, the impact on rates is about is about the. Um, the, the the servicing the loan rather than and then the, the full cost of the of those projects um yeah okay darren so yeah talking about the ymere dam funding so i'm trying to step you through this um this diagram so um so looking at the the two sort of main rows running running left to right mm -hmm. so the top six million so that's the the difference between um where we were in the ltp where 158 million was what we put in the LTP and 164 million was the, the top end of the range of estimates at that point. And then the, the row below is the 20 million that's, you know, takes us from the 158 to 100 and what was I say, 184 um, million. So, so, and then looking at the columns down, we talk about the council share. So this is the, the, the bit that relates to benefits in terms of, um, uh, uh, providing drinking water uh, in terms of the environmental benefit to the flows in the river itself, and I guess the wider benefits to the to the community through um, through economic development and those sorts of things. And then on the right hand set side is the the irrigators share. So this is really the benefits to the people who who are um, using water to to irrigate crops and and the like. So. If we just start with that, you know, that six million difference uh, I talked about. So the council share, um, really, we're looking to that, which is uh, three, just over three million of that. Um, we're planning to use the current funding allocation that was that was um, uh, was consulted on and subsequently decided through the long term plan. So effectively, that's through the water account and, and water rates. Effectively, um, there's a zone of benefit which is a targeted rate on on people who who own land uh, own property in the area where there's direct benefit from the the um, the, the dam and the water supply. And then there's a district-wide fixed charge. So basically everyone in the district makes a contribution, um, again, to recognize some of those wider benefits that, that spread through the whole community. And then in terms of the irrigators share, which is uh, just under the 3 million. So again, that will be funded through an increase um, in Waimea Water Limited uh, charges. So effectively water charges are made to the irrigators. So the irrigators fund, fund that portion. With the... Um, the, the 20 million additional. So again, the, the, the council share again to, to be funded in the same way through those, those different rates. The irrigators share, which is just under, which is just under the 10 million. Um, realistically, we it's not possible for us to to um, to do that through more charges to the irrigators, um, and so the council's decided to fund that through income from its forestry. So um, um, uh, yeah, so it's, it, particularly for the 22-23 year, um, while we undertake further negotiations with the irrigators themselves and Waimea Water and potentially government to, to look at the, the longer term funding arrangements. Sorry, Sorry. Uh, Alan, why aren't well, the irrigators prepared to to pay additional? I, I think the understanding is if if we if we um, kind of enforce that they they would go under. They just they, they, they just I think I think the feeling is that that. Yeah, we've extracted as much as we can in terms of our funding from from them. Um, I guess they they like us um, hadn't anticipated a project cost of the sort of level that we're we're reaching now. Um, 
just to, to save for that 20 million, um, we're also sort of at this point borrowing that on an interest only basis. Um, and so, um, yeah, so not doing any repayments over those first couple of years. Again, part of that's about um, further understanding what the implications of the free orders um, reform is going to be and uh, yeah, potentially the potential for, for those loans to move into to those entities rather than um, be dealt with by council. Um, sorry, just can you go back, Darren? So yeah, so yeah, there is quite a, an in, increase in water rates that, um, in the forthcoming uh, year. So that's a combination of those Water Services Act costs that we talked about, the, the dam cost overruns and that lower water use by industrial users. So there's a sort of triple whammy happening all at once, which is uh, affecting those, those rates. Okay, Darren, thanks. Okay, and then in terms of options for consultation, we have two two options that we we're, we're asking people around. So, um, just as context for this, in in the long term plan, our estimate uh, our estimate for for the rates increase for the forthcoming year was was four point one seven percent. For because of those cost increases we've talked about, we don't believe that's a practical option anymore. So, uh, hence we're not putting that one on the table. Um, so the first option um, is is pretty much the 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 program we had planned in the uh, the, the, the LTP and the ten year plan for the 22-23 year with a, some minor kind of uh, amendments, um, but recognising all those cost increases coming over the top, um, so that ha has a rates revenue increase impact of seven point six six percent. So that's how much more we need to raise in 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 rates revenue. Um, of the two options, it's it's lower risk. So lower risk in terms of us, um, uh, us you know, I guess lower risk in terms of not being able to deliver all the services that we, we've, we've indicated and also lower risk in terms of us as not racking up a, a, a deficit at the end of the financial year. Um, it gives us more ability to absorb shocks, including kind of natural hazards and unexpected events during the year. Um, and it, yeah, it allows us to largely deliver the capital program that was in, in year two of the long-term plan. The other option, option two, um, it again, starts with the, 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 the program we had in, in the long-term plan for, for year two and those additional um, cost pressures. But then we have done quite a bit of work to really try and find some savings that would help reduce the impact on um, of the, the rates revenue increase uh, on the community to 5.51%. To Again, council's very aware of the sorts of issues you raised earlier about um, families doing it tough and um, potential impact of, of uh, rates increase on top of all the other um, price increases that are that are going up at the moment. So, so just to take you through the the reductions that we've we've made here um, to to try and you know, to try and to get back to to the five point five one percent. So we've certainly made some significant reductions in our consultancy budgets. So particularly in the the water, environmental management, coastal assets, rivers, and strategic policy activities. Um, so. Clearly, um, that will mean we have less ability to call on that specialist expertise during the, the year, um, and is likely to, you know, delay some of the policy and planning work we had planned for the next financial year. Um, at the same time, some of our uh, in-house capacity around um, those issues is being absorbed by some of those government um, uh, reform programs, so being able to participate in those and provide a what government required and, and also the, the I guess the, the council's feedback on those. Um, we have reduced the budgets for maintenance and operations in our transport activity, stormwater, water supply and rivers activities. So, um, so what that does is it increases the risk if there's a significant hazard or unforeseen events during the year. Um, if, if that is the case, then we may well need to exceed the budgets, these lower budgets. Um, it also lowers our ability to respond to sort of ad hoc requests from the community during the, the year. We've deferred some um, capital projects, so um, in particularly um, uh, Trunk Main upgrade in Lower Queen Street. Um, oh, I've lost my page now. But, uh, Sorry, um, an upgrade, so deferring an upgrade of, of the Headingley Lane uh, pump station and Rising Main, that's also again Richmond West. Um, we've reduced the budget for stormwater and reserves land purchases in Richmond. 
Um, we've re reduced the budget for installing emergency storage tanks at wastewater pump stations. Uh, those tanks are used to help um, reduce the risk of uh, wastewater overflows during heavy rain, those, those sorts of events. Um, as we said, these are all deferrals. They're, they're, they're not things that we don't think need doing, they still need doing, um, but we're just saying they, they wouldn't happen in, in, in the 22, 23 years. Um, so I missed one a bullet point there. So that there's, we've also taken a higher forecast for fees and charges. So this is particularly around building consents and resource consents. And so effectively we have based that on a higher activity level, the sort of activity level that we've seen over the last couple of years and continuing for the year. So again, you know, we're taking a risk that that um, the activity stays at, at that level. And then but the surely there's no impact on that on uh, rates because that's a user pays. It, it is user pays. Yep. Yep. You're right. So why is that a uh, why is that impact rates? Matt, are you able to answer that one? Uh, Alan, <laughs> thank, thank you. Oh, I'm yeah, hospital no, pass. No, I was yeah. going to say that's known as a hospital pass. But higher forecast fees and charges. Yeah. Um, well, well, it, it's not. It's a, it, it's a beneficial one. Um, no, it goes the other way. If we have higher forecast fees and charges, we, um, you know, it it reduces the actual rates overall. Like we get get more for user pays essentially. So, yeah. Um, pe pe right. Perhaps perhaps so not. Perhaps not a point appropriate for that slide, but it's probably okay. more just the fact they go hand in hand. So, um, yeah. so what surely one 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 thing one offsets, offsets the other, it, doesn't yeah. it? Indeed, it does. It does. Well, but, no, obviously the council's profiting from from that if it's uh, a, be a beneficial area. What what does what has happened is the council uses um, again some standard benchmarks for um, adjusting its fees and charges schedule. Um, higher really means higher compared to the long-term plan in the slide, not compared to option one. So it's probably a poor, poor, poor inclusion in this particular slide. Mm. Okay. And but, if one off, but if one offsets the other, it's a um, it's yeah. it's not a point that's really in the budget, right? No, it's it's net, a, it should be net, it, net neutral. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. It's a fair point that you're making. Yep. The final item there is um, some again deferral of, of two million dollars worth of our, of our digital innovation work. So, yeah, what is what does that look like? Um, so, I'm... so we've got a program um, that we we put into the long term plan to update our information technology systems. So some of that sort of back of house systems, but some of that is is also front facing systems so to make it easier for. Uh, the community to interact with us um, online and uh, to access data and those sorts of things. Um, so what we're proposing here is to to again defer some of that work. So slow slow that process down. Um, it it, it um, means yeah we'll have to revisit the del deliverables for the year ahead. Um, and and to some degree it recognizes again the, the scarcity of resources that we have in the IT area again kind of relating to that, that issue of, of attracting staff and some of our partners um, and again you know there is a deferral so the work will still need to happen but it will, will happen at a later later date. Um, option two again, again yeah there are some higher risks in terms of um, deficit um, of events unexpected events happening during the year um, driving higher costs and potential potential deficits um, and yeah reducing our ability to be able to respond to uh, to requests and changes from the community during the year so but surely the on that on that higher risks uh, aspect and I'll come back to the digital innovation mm -hmm. part in a, in a minute um, Surely those risks exist in the LTP in option one as well as option two, because none of us have a crystal ball to know no. that we're going to get a significant weather event. As a, as an example, I assume that that's what you would refer to as a uh, as a risk. So, yeah, in in the long term. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that that risk, as I say, that risk always exists um, in the long term plan. Um, I guess there, there was some provision to be able to respond to those within the year concerned. Um, and the other thing that we do to be able to respond to that is we, we hold 
borrowing or, or yeah or debt debt headroom so that if yep. the, if there is something like that we can we can borrow more than we had planned in either the LTP or the annual plan to be able to respond in the short term to those um, to the to the issues that are coming out of the the natural hazard event. Yeah, and this, essentially in the long run, you need to make sure that every year has enough adequate um, capacity to absorb the shocks we get from year to year. They vary from year to year, but we consistently get them. So you can take a bit of a hit in one year. It's a bit like um, deferred maintenance, but you know that if we get hit this year, then we're going to have to make it up next year, plus make sure that we've got adequate provision next year. So it's just that kind of long run, making sure we've got enough financial headroom to deal with these things. Mm, I guess what I'm not understanding, though, is at the moment, the LTP called for an increase of 4.17%, yet you're calling that out as a, as a risk in option two. Mm. Um, and I'm not quite understanding what's changed because ostensibly you've got the same risk in the LTP in option one and option two. Yeah, what, what, what the, the risk might remain the same. Sorry, I might just. But but what has happened is our. So what's happened here is that we've in option one we've taken our long term plan and stacked it with the extra costs that we've, we've we know we're going to incur. In option two, we've still got those stacked extra costs. But what we've done to try and reduce the overall burden is to take some of the money out of what we had planned in the long term plan. So so those lower budgets for maintenance and operations mean that we've got less capacity to respond to events if they if they happen during the year. Have you got those column diagrams somewhere in the yeah, presentation? Yeah, just coming up. Just coming up. Next slide. There we go. Yeah, that, so that illustrates the concept there. So this is trying to illustrate the the two options and the 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 impact on rates increase on or, or for each of those main um, components. So you can see there the the wage related market increase uh, impacts um, in both options by 0.78 percent of a 0.78 percent rates in rates revenue increase. You talked about water services earlier, so that'll have a 1.18% uh, rates revenue increase impact. And then what this diagram shows you is, is that where, where we've made the savings in option two are in that base LTP program. So that what we had planned for the long-term plan. So we've reduced, made reductions in there. Um, the, those additional uh, costs that, are, that have come on that are outside our control, uh, they apply equally in both options. Um, sorry, okay, you continue, I've got okay, to, um... okay, so there's just a couple of other changes we just wanted to draw people's attention to. They don't affect um, rates in the, in the next financial year, but just to, to again, again, you know, being clear about changes from things that were in the, um, in the long-term plan. This first one's changed in the last 24 hours, so, <laughs> so just bring you right up to date. So basically the government, the government have, a, have a fund available um, to help support Councils in high high growth areas to provide the infrastructure that's necessary to support growth. So this is a lot of this is around trying to uh, boost housing development um, and reduce um, or <laughs> help, help reduce the impact of, of, of housing affordability. Um, so in the in the in our draft annual plan and the consultation document, we <clears throat> we had included funding for three projects, being being one in Takaka, one in Mochaka, one in Wakefield. Um, so opportunity, uh, th these have been shortlisted by the government. So we, we actually applied for a whole uh, range more, but these were the three that they had shortlisted. Um, and that would have a potential government funding of $24 million. Um, but it didn't mean we had to put some additional um, transport projects into the long, uh, into the annual plan that weren't in the LTP. Um, so an extra $1.5 million worth. Um, but they're mostly funded through that infrastructure acceleration fund and through development contributions. So effectively paid for by the developers of the sections and the properties rather than by ratepayers. Um, in the last 24 hours, we've been, is this public, Dwayne? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, all, it's fine. You can no, talk okay, about sorry, it. Just oh, I might start crying, but you can double, talk about double, it. Double check. So, so in the last 24 hours, the government have sort of come back and confirmed the Motueka project, but but not the Takaka and Wakefield one. So, so um, yeah, so we are going to have to make some adjustments in the final annual plan. But I say uh, these don't affect rates uh, in the forthcoming year. 
And then the final, the, the other change there is we're planning to make some improvements to Port Terracoe. So that's um, a new um, new toilet and ablutions block and associated sewerage systems to go with that. Uh, a grey water disposal facility for ships using the port. Uh, a new food grade wharf. Um, and that's really to meet increasing demand from marine farms in the area. And we want to improve the existing wharf fendering system, which is a health and safety issue, issue uh, and extend the breakwater, which provides more capacity. Um, if we go ahead with this, it does mean that we will need funding from the industry concerned and from government. Um, and this is really funded over a number of years by users of the port rather than rates. So it doesn't, doesn't affect the rates uh, figure for, for next year. So these are these are just, so some summaries of our, um, our key financial sort of metrics. So on the left, there's the rates uh, income increase, and you can see what it's been over the last few years. Um, the four point uh, under 2022-23. So that the 4.2 was what we, you know, 4.17 was what we had estimated in, in the LTP, and you can see the two options um, in front of us um, in the consultation document. And on the right-hand side, that's the, the council's net debt. So, um, sorry, the, the red lines there on, on each graph are some, um, some caps or limits that the council set itself in its financial strategy as part of the LTP. So going back to the rates income increase, you can see that both of our, um, our options are, are exceeding the caps the council uh, set itself. <clears throat> as noted earlier, the council ha does have borrowing capacity above that, that cap. But it set itself those uh, those limits to try and um, I guess put some rigor to its own um, financial planning and financial management. So right hand side is so I don't just go back. The right hand side is is net debt. So again, our, our, our cap there is at 250 million. Um, you can see that in, under both options we get you get pretty brimming close to to that figure, um, and certainly. Um, what it does mean is that, is that we are we will need to make more changes in to our capital program in the 2023-24 year to be able to stay under that cap. Otherwise, um, if we just carry on and deliver what was in the long-term plan for that year, um, we will exceed that cap again. Uh, cap in the in the in the subsequent year. So there's more sort of issues ahead in terms of of uh, of debt. So this just gives you an indication of the impact on, on rates. So um, what this is showing you is that that uh, for 53% of rating units, there'll be an increase in rates of between naught and $200. Um, and you can see the, the other figures there for, for, um, yeah, for different, different rates level increases um, for different portions of the, of the rating units within the, the district. The actual rates that get charged on a property depend on, on the property type, its uh, location, what services it actually receives and its, uh, its, its capital value. So um, yeah, so, and what we do have is we have a rates tool on our website. So you can sort of plug in and, and see what you, the, the estimated rates will be for your property mm -hmm. next year. So mm -hmm. that's, that's available. Okay, and then, and then uh, again, I might not run through all of these, but that basically what we're also trying to do is just let you know um, about a number of uh, projects that are all, also coming up for 22, 23. So they, these were for the large part um, already in the long-term plan, or in some cases we received uh, external government funding to make these happen. So they're really trying to let you know there's a whole, uh, there's a whole range of work going on um, mm. and a lot of good things coming down the, down the pipeline in terms of, of work we have planned for, for the next financial year. Um, again, I, I don't know. Have you have you got a copy of the consultation document, Tori? Or have no, you seen I haven't. It online? No, okay, so again, maybe we'll uh, we'll email you a copy after. after oh, it's okay. Evening. I can find it online. As well. oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And then, really, just wanted to make you also aware that we've got a sort of a parallel consultation happening around um, our schedule of fees and charges. So this is an annual process we go through um, to um, to re review our fees and charges. So again, obviously. Fees, revenue that we, we gain um, from user pays, fees and charges offsets what we need to raise in rates. Um, so we use fees and charges where we can. <laughs> um, 
and on an annual basis we consult on on the changes we're proposing <clears throat> so um yes yeah, so a number of uh, there are a number of changes i guess i'll just give you some some of the headlines so obviously a, a lot of the charges are, are, are being adjusted for inflation um and in some cases the charges are based uh, are based on a staff charge out rate so the uh, staff charge out rate is also increasing so um i think there's 160,000 per hour in sorry it was 160 yeah i don't think it is no, 164 dollars it is 160 dollars uh, per hour in the current um year and we're going up to 170 next year because again that's reflecting some of those additional costs of hiring and retaining skilled staff um, there is a 20 percent increase in the fees at our resource recovery centers so that's um uh, that's largely driven by higher costs in the nelson tasman landfill business unit so landfill costs okay. um some of the uh, the charges for building and resource consents going up and particularly the deposits so what we've been finding is our, our, our deposits are relatively low compared with the costs of a lot of those consents so what that means is we have to send out multiple invoices in addition to the deposits so we're increasing the, the size of the the, the deposit um, and then there are i just going to find my bit of paper here for there are a few new charges so ones around um, revising traffic management plans for for corridor access requests so you know if you, basically there's a charge for um for having your plan your your um, traffic management plan uh, approved and then if you change it there's now an additional cost for that um, there's a new cost, uh, new charge for uh, taking bulk water from some supply uh, filling points in Richmond, Wakefield, and Montreuil, and those are those are changes that are driven by the Water Services Act that we talked about earlier. Um, and there's a new charge for take, undertaking commercial activities on the on council reserves. So, yeah, so just really giving you a flavour for some of the, the changes that are there, yeah. and again, the opportunity for people to make submissions and give us feedback on those. I won't take you through this, but there's various different ways to to make a, a submission. Um, so yeah, I, I don't. You, you, it sounds like you you haven't at this point made a submission. So um, no, and and yeah, nor will I. Okay, okay. Well, there, there is the opportunity, yeah. but, but and, and again, you know, we will share the feedback you're giving us verbally today. So yeah. um, with the, yeah. with the councillors, so they they will get that. So it, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I, will, I, I think one. one sorry. sorry. I was going to say, Tori, um, we've been trialling this new way of making submissions, which is a video format. People go onto a website, you press a button, and it records you making mm. your two cents worth. Not very well taken up at the moment. Feel free to use it. We'd really <laughs> like it to, to see it become something that we um, yeah. make because it makes it easy for people to do this. You know, so yeah, you know, if people, you're worried about the amount of writing yeah. you got to do, there's an option. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Um, I, I think people are people are terrified of uh, of video. Um, just generally, you know, you ask people to do a video CV, they won't do it. Um, people are terrified of video um, for pri would, privacy yeah. privacy reasons. Uh, people get nervous, they stutter, they, you know, mm. you have to do 15 mm. takes. And I'm, and I'm just talking about myself. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think younger people are probably more used to it because they're yes. load, loading videos up onto social media all the time. But, so, yeah. Yes, exactly. But they're not rate payers necessarily. Uh, so but to be fair, in the last twelve months, the Zoom revolution has uh, has altered that considerably. I wouldn't say so. I've been doing video conferences for for many many years, yeah. and uh, yeah, still need to do about fifteen takes. So a question for you, um, and this is possibly for for Matt rather than uh, the you know the others on this call is um, you know is the is the LTP um, rate viable um because i think one of the things that i struggle as a as a rate payer of i've got either option one at an increase of uh, about 19 million dollars i think it is uh, option two at an increase of 13 million dollars but what would it to, to make an informed decision what would i be trading off if a, as a rate payer um if we stuck to 4.17%. That's, I guess, what I don't have the information for. Um, because presumably you've already done that exercise, but you're not making that publicly available. And in my lifetime in business, if I went to my bosses in uh, in New York and said, sorry, I can't de deliver the, um, the, the plan, 
um, I would have, you'd still be able to see the boot mark in my backside. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and it's just, I, I guess I'm really surprised having been in business and having run multiple country budgets for, for many years, <clears throat> why you're giving rate payers two options, not necessarily three. So three being 4.17%, here's what we need to trade off, here's option two, here's option three. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by that because I think, you know, going back to what I said at the, uh, at the outset of this discussion is there's a lot of people who are already doing it very, very hard um, in this country and specifically in this region. And, you know, it seems to be that the council blindly are, uh, and I, and I don't mean this as criticism on a personal level, but the council are blindly going down this path of it's either option one or option two. Um, and, you know, I think if you were to put it to, to a vote or a referendum, of course, nobody wants a, a rate increase at all. 4%, people can possibly stomach that. But we start to talk about 7.66% or nearly 8%. Um, if we round that number up, that's a lot of money that people have to go and find um, in an already struggling marketplace. Um, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll have a go, go first, it. Jane, but I'm sure you'll, um, yeah. as always, round it off slightly better than me. But um, I, I suppose going back, back to your inflation point, and let me know if I cut out, um, I, I, I'm not even sure that the... 5.51 nor the 7.77 actually reflects the, the reality of the situation we're facing. Um, however, you know, going back to the 4.17, um, it, it was a possibility that was considered by our senior leadership team and, and indeed our councillors. But so many of our external costs have sort of changed around the Water Act, around inflation, although that was a slight increase from what we had um, around the Waimea Dam. It, it sort of, it was sort of just viewed as impossible to, to manage ourselves in terms of what the local government, like we, we have to be, um, we have to be realistic in our budget setting, I suppose, and it was just thought that it was impossible to stay at the 4.17 given the pressures that we are actually under. So, but, and, but, but Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, that budget was signed off in June of 2021. Yes. And that is 11 months ago. And yes. 11 months ago, you know, the world did look a bit different. Uh, we didn't have probably the, the foresight on inflation, mm -hmm. but I think a number of the factors, you know, and having just done a, a build, knowing that costs were going up 12 months ago. Um, and okay, I'm talking about timber and not in some other supplies, but, mm. you know, I, I'm this, this is, I, I guess, an area that I'm just really puzzled about how, a budget can be signed off 11 months ago and already you're saying that you can't achieve it. In fact, you're even questioning now whether option one and option two, you can actually achieve the, I mean, the, 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 the activities based on, on those increases. I, I might so, just jump in if I may, um, Alan, before you answer Victoria's yeah. question. So um, what happened is that the budgets are set about 13 months ago. Um, and, and if you recall, that was right in the middle of when we went into our first lockdown and all the economic commentators were saying we're heading for a, a Great Depression. Um, you know, our well, advice. The first was, lockdown was 2020, I think. Oh, you sorry. Were fine. Sorry. But um, so so it's, last, it's two last, years ago, 24 yeah, sorry. months ago. What, what happens is the LTP starts that year. Um, we start about two years out. And to be fair, you're right. Sorry. We were still heading into an environment at the end of 2020. 20, where people were telling us quite bad things. It, it did start turning around, but we eventually, essentially locked it down in around May last year. Um, I, I think we probably just have to take it on the chin that we should have been um, in between developing our initial budgets, which is at the end of 2020, 
including inflation estimates and things like that. And when the LTP was printed, um, the, the, there should have been an opportunity maybe to revisit that. It's a very bureaucratic process we run through with the LTP and it's, it's quite a hardship to turn around, especially to increase. Typically, it's easy to um, go out with something higher and then change it down. Um, going out with something and then being told, oh, actually, you need to increase your inflation estimates and now that 4.17 is actually 5.17 last year. It has some, um, the way our legislation works may have meant we may have needed to go out for a second round of consultations and that simply would not have been possible. We couldn't have printed our LTP in time. So it's not an excuse, probably just need to take the criticism on the chin. In terms of the um, the current process to get it down below 4.17 would need, would need to mean for us cutting some of our, our functions. Uh, there is no doubt about it because we've you know, you've got inflation that's above the kind of 1.52% minimum there, which means we've got all these extra things that we've got to do, which means you've got to cut, you've got to cut something that we do at the moment. Now, the, the, the council did kind of contemplate that. Our leadership team did kind of contemplate that. And the problem we suffer is that most of the things that cost a lot of money are things that we're kind of compelled to do. Um, they are consenting. They are building our infrastructure. Um, and we have to be good long-term prudent managers of those things. Um, and just deferring too much means we've got a bigger bow wave to deal with later. Sure. And, and I can say that the um, that our LTP forecasts assume something like in year four to seven, Matt, please tell me if I'm wrong, but something like six, seven and 8% of um, uh, rates rises in those years. So if we kick the can too much down the road at this point in year, we actually make a bigger uh, rates increase later mm. on rather than smoothing sure, appreciate it out. That. Yeah. Um, in terms of could we have cut, cut services? Yeah, we could. And, and the the, count, the LT and council turned its minds to what those things might be that you can effectively a discretionary. And there are things above ground. There are things like library services. There are things like how, how good your customer services. is. There are things like the community programs that we get um, that help volunteer support groups. Um, and essentially the, the council took the view that actually those are the things that people most value. We deliver a, a million things, but those are the things that would be really noticeable to our community if we cut. And they're actually small fry in the scheme of council's expenditure. Doing anything else would probably mean we'd have to change our LTP because we're not allowed to cut levels of service without doing a long-term plan change. And that in of itself is a $150,000 proposition, plus the fact that we might only do it for one or two years before we bring that, thing, um, that service back on board would be, I guess, another complicating factor. So that's a very long answer to a simple question, Tori, sorry, but it's, um, it's in short, it's a big ship to turn around fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and Dwayne, look, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate everything that you've said, and I uh, I agree to uh, to by and large with what you what you've said, and um, I just I'm just surprised about the you know the the timing, um, and you know saying that you know we couldn't defer the printing um, of the LTP, we'll make it make it digital. Do you, you know what I mean? And you can change that on on the fly. It's the, the um, <laughs> so sorry, I, mean, I didn't literally mean the printing. Sorry, I meant the approval process with three councils. Yeah. What I mean, sorry, yeah, yeah. But that's just you know, um, I guess it's pretty disappointing as a ratepayer here that you know we already have some of the highest rates in the whole country. I'm still scratching my head as to how and why. Um, that's oh. the that's the case. That might have been um, true a few years ago, Tori, but we're, everyone else is catching up to us. And I guess the one thing that's probably sometimes forgotten is that we're a unitary authority. So um, we're effectively a combination of your regional council and your district council or your city council. And, and people often separate those two things in their minds if they come from a place like Wellington. Um, yeah, but, but and, and Matt can probably give you some statistics on how well everyone else is catching up with us. I think the Regional Council in Canterbury is proposing a 24% rates increase, Matt, is that right? Or something in that order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah there are some, there's some interesting yeah, numbers out there, very high numbers. Yeah. But yes, yeah. it is, we do do a bit more, um, but so our, our base is, it should be naturally higher, but, um, you know, it's very hard for uh, the average punter dif to differentiate between um, a regional and a territorial, etc. So uh, yeah, the, the the arguments lost sometimes. So it is tricky. I don't want to make it sound, um, Tori, by being defensive and all that, that we aren't hearing the message because I think council was very aware of the number of people hurting out there. 
I know, I know our councillors yeah. uh, um, made just about every single one were concerned about the um, the options we're putting out, but didn't see a prudent way, uh, an alternative prudent way out. Mm. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, we've gone way over time, I think. So um, um, thank you for, for sharing uh, what you what you have, and it's been a rather unique situation to have <laughs> had to have have exclusive uh, yeah. use of of you. Um, you know, and and I feel your pain, but um, but I also feel the the pain, um, and I really feel sorry for many people um, in this region who are already doing it tough, um, who are going to even do it tougher. And you know, I hear stories uh, quite frequently of people who are leaving this region because it's getting too expensive and unaffordable. Mm -hmm. I think you've acknowledged that yourself in terms of some of the talent that you're trying to attract um, to, to the region. And uh, it's a real shame because it's a very uh, special place, but it's also a special place that I, I don't think has um, a strong enough financial management. Um, and this is not a criticism of, of Matt, it's of the council uh, does not have strong enough financial management in place, and you know the the dam is a, a great example of that. To be, you know, sensibly eighty percent over the initial budget already, and possibly with a further run on that is uh, is outrageous. And um, yeah. I, I, I know that there's some local government uh, elections coming up and I assume mm. that there'll be many people who are very nervous who sit in, in council and possibly rightly so, because I don't think that people can, can stomach and pallet what is being forced on them by, uh, by the council. Okay, and again, thank, you know, thanks for your feedback. Yeah, feedback, feedback noted, and I say we will, we will share it with the, the, the councillors so they can give it due consideration as they, as they move yeah. forward with this process. Yeah, yeah good thank conversation, Jory. Thank, right. thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Right. See you. Bye.